All right. Let's freaking go. Welcome to the Athletes Ocean Podcast. You got your hosts, Jason Nolf, John Broughton. We're going to do a little weekend recap on the Final X uh, event from this weekend. Absolutely. Run through it match by match. You look dead, though. You need some Jocko Go. Thank you. You got to bring the energy, you know, because we need the content. And so, hyped up Jason. <laughs> it's Let's good. freaking go. It's good for business. Oh, my gosh. I needed that. That's good stuff. So, Final X, Prudential Center, Newark, New Jersey. Your first thoughts? Yeah, it was it was a it was a good trip. Um, obviously, uh, you know, I lost both of my matches, so we can talk about that in a little bit. But, uh, you know, we went down on Friday. We went down on Thursday. Got a workout in at uh, I think it was Del Barton High School, and in Morristown, I think it was New Jersey. Uh, they had beautiful facilities, obviously. Um, you know, the coaches were super awesome there. Got, uh, got my weight down my weight, my weight cut this time was a little bit, I was a little bit heavier coming in. So it was a little bit more challenging of a weight cut to get down, but luckily weigh-ins weren't until 1130 on Saturday. So I got to actually, I typically wake up on weight, but I was able to get a workout in Saturday morning and that really helped my weight cut. Um, but no, yeah, we had the, so workout on Thursday, we had a press conference on Friday and I was I was sitting up there, and I'm like, man, everybody here has won a world medal except for me. Really? And I'm like, yeah, I haven't even made a world team yet. But uh, there was eight wrestlers. It was Gilman, Zane, Burroughs, Dake, David, Jaden, and Kyle, and then me. So, like, most of them are multiple-time world champs, uh, you know, a couple Olympic champs there. Um, you know, Zane, obviously a world silver medalist, is going to go get the gold this year. Um but I was sitting up there. I'm like, this is pretty cool to be, uh, you know, on a stage and being chosen alongside, you know, these guys because obviously it means I've done something good to be in an opportunity like that. And, uh, you know, I might not have got, have got as many questions as the other guys, uh, especially, you know, with Burroughs being a New Jersey native. He got a lot of the bulk of the questions. But, you know, I was definitely honored to be a part of that panel. And, um, yeah, it was fun. I like uh, I like big events. I like press conferences. I like – uh, you know, competing in front of, you know, huge crowds. So uh, Prudential Center was an uh, amazing facility. Obviously, for us, it was easy to get to. And, um, you know, I felt the energy of the crowd when we went, when we went out there. I was telling my wife, uh, I love do, running out to have my own walkout song. Like, I think You picked a good one this yeah, time. Well, I had, yeah, I had Dancing Queen. Uh, that was my first walkout song. I, I got the chills on both my runouts. You know, when, whenever I have my walkout song, it just, like, makes it so much more fun to compete. I don't know why. Like, the U.S. Open's fun, but, like, you don't get your walkout song, so it's kind of like, I don't know, like, it, it, you're, like, a little bit more tired. and then But when you get your walkout song and it's, like, a built-up, uh, like, show and entertainment, yeah, it's, like, it's so much more fun to compete. And, you know, I had a lot of fun competing. Um, you get that rush. Yeah. Because you've been listening to that song. It's, like, you picked it for a reason because it gives you that, like, dopamine rush. And you're, like, all right. I try not to listen to it too much. Like, I try not to listen to, like, the songs that hype me up too much, like, unless I'm, like, right about to compete because, like, I can't do it. It just, like, gets me too fired up. So you got to you got to keep dancing queen for the big moments. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. That's going to be when I fight MMA. That's going to be my my walkout song. I can see so. people getting so into that, like people just going wild. The whole crowd is like clapping along. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be sweet. I'm going to be running down, you know, cla- slapping everybody's hands. I might jump in the crowd, run around, do a couple laps and then get back <laughs> out onto the into the octagon. So, I'm definitely going to have a lot bigger probably of a I have a really big personality, but in wrestling I'm like kind of like I'm still like a little have a little bit of a serious mantra. So, you I feel know, like everybody does though. Yeah, wrestling's just kind of that way. It's like it's not as much of like entertainment, it's more just like you're you're putting your pride on the line. So, yeah, and it's also just the culture in wrestling like people are kind of uh people are kind of like um they're they're humble and they're that's like almost like what everyone needs to be. It's, it's hard to explain because like nobody goes outside the box. Gable was like the first person to start doing it. Like, yeah. like uh, at the U.S. Open, Gable like stood around after the match, was talking to the crowd, yelling at them, <laughs> "Is this what you want to see?" You know, and then like does his backflip, and then d- does the same thing at uh, um, at the U.S. Open 
uh, you know, stays after the match a little bit, puts on a little bit of a show. He's obviously a yeah. super uh, entertaining at character. Final X, you mean? Yeah, Final X. Yeah. What did I say? Super 32? <laughs> no, the U.S. Open. <laughs> uh, the U.S. Open. <laughs> we did it at the U.S. Open, too. But, uh, yeah. Can you imagine him doing it at Super 32? <laughs> Just like he didn't even wrestle. I, I have the Super flex- 32 in my head. I don't know what's going on. Flexing out the little kids. Yeah. Oh, my- dude, it's a show. Like, he brings he brings so much entertainment. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, I think. And it's his, like, it's his thing now. So, Everybody is like, all right, like we want to see it, you know. Yeah. And they're uh they'll come for it. It's cool. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I mean, uh it was an awesome event. They obviously had the they had the third and fourth place match uh before we competed. So, you know, I wanted to give a shout out to, you know, all the ocean instructors, even those that, you know, might not have won this weekend. Um, you know, Kylie Kylie Welker I think took third. Um uh, Matt, she looked great. Yeah, she uh, avenged a match at the U.S. Open. Yeah, yeah. So she did wonderful. This yeah, weekend. shout out Kylie. Uh, you know Matthew Klodzik had a tough match against uh, Joey McKenna. Um, obviously, really both are really good people. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, very competitive and. Um, yeah, he's tough as nails. Keegan O'Toole had a really good match against. Uh, <laughs> we did <didn't>. no. <laughs> no. Not that it wasn't good. It just didn't. Happen. No, it just didn't happen. I was really, I, I'm really interested to see uh, Keegan and Vincenzo wrestle. It'll, it'll happen. Yeah. Um, so I'm excited to. Chenzo's on the mend right now. Yeah, he's but, on the mend. But uh, but yeah, that didn't didn't even happen. But Keegan, you know, you know Keegan, he was ready to rock. He was yeah. ready to roll. So, um, if there was a match, he would have looked great in it. Yeah. Shout out Keegan. So yeah, obviously, uh, you know, one of Ocean's best instructors, Amit Alor, uh, looked absolutely incredible. Uh, I think she got two tech falls and just looked great. And uh, she's definitely probably. Uh, like in my head, she's probably the pound for pound number one girl in the world. Wow, bold uh, claim, but I could yeah. see it. She looked, she looked incredible. Yeah, yeah, and she does. She looks untouchable at her weight class, um, domestically at least, um, and she just continues to have international success at all age groups. Yeah, so huge shout out to her. She looked great. Yeah, also shout out uh, Jen Page, uh, making her first world team, uh, down to I think fifty nine kilos. So fellow NLWC member um you know she looked great uh, i think she also got two tech falls she wrestled right before me so varner was actually uh her coach in her in her matches and he goes hey like i gotta be with jen but as soon as she's done i'll come back i'm like all right we'll just tell her to make it quick so that you can come back here and get me ready for my match and uh you know having having uh you know bo nickel and jake varner out there to be my coaches uh obviously uh was really good uh you know bo is probably one of the best feels that i could have for kyle dake so um, you know, I know Bo's got a lot going on, so I was super grateful to have him out there in my corner, getting me ready, help me with my weight cut, help me with my technique and, uh, my match preparation. So, um, shout out Bo Nickel for that. And, uh, just thank, uh, thank you obviously to my coaches and my sponsors, NLWC, uh, Tight Market Wrestling Club, Jocko Fuel, Scrap Life and Athletes Ocean. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, that was, that was awesome. And, um, yeah, Bo you and Bo have like a, a good connection and friendship. And so it's cool to have him coaching you. Like, it's cool to be around that. Cause uh, yeah, he's, he's, well, cool. he gets it. Like, like I was telling him, like, there's not many people that like, I would get like pumped for after a wrestling match. Like if I go win the Olympics, like I'm just going to ra- probably raise my hand and then walk off the mat. Like I'm not a guy that does like celebrations, but like I could see myself like jumping into Bo's arms or something like, <laughs> like in uh you know, not in a weird way or anything, <laughs> but, <laughs> no. but like, you know, like getting hype because he's, he's like one of the ultimate hype man. So yeah, you guys could do like the lift, you know? Yeah. Yeah. The blades of glory. Uh huh. So, well, yeah, <laughs> maybe not that one. No, not that one. <laughs> not that one. Uh, yeah. So, you know, Bo's obviously, you know, one of the bu- best coaches and friends I could ask for to have there. So super thankful. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It was, it was awesome. Did Braxton compete? Uh, no, no, no. But uh, Aaron did, yeah. So shout out Aaron, and um, and then Nick Lee makes the world team, yeah, by taking out Yanni. Yeah, let's talk about these matches a little bit. Yeah, uh, let's do it. So we got we'll start at uh, fifty seven kilos. Obviously, uh, who was at fifty seven? We got Gilman versus Zane Richards. Yep. Um, so obviously Gilman's our boy. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know Zane Richards is actually a really good friend of mine too. I uh, I've talked to him a lot at the uh, Team USA camps at the World Cup mm-hmm. uh, events like that. A lot of people underestimate Zane Richards, I think. Um, but when I've been watching him compete, like at the World Cup, he looked great. Like he was he was he's taking out really high level opponents. I think he's only uh, gotten better. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I mean, it was definitely 
Um, you know, I think a lot of people were predicting Gilman to like kind of dominate the match, but uh, you know, I, I know how good Gilman is, but I also know how good Zane Richards is. So I, uh, you know, I was ready for two battles, and I think Gilman was ready too. Um, just didn't go his way, but you know, that's just how sports go. That's how wrestling goes, and um, yeah, just kind of yeah. just kind of keep getting better. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Like I think a lot of people were talking like, oh, Gilman's gonna run away with this one, but here, the the good thing for Team USA, like obviously Gilman's our boy, and um, I hate um, seeing him lose. But um, he'll be back, and he'll be back strong. The good thing for Team USA is that Zane is definitely a, a competitor for a world medal. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, like World Zane, gold, for yeah, sure. Exactly, or a world title. So um, he's really good. We're not we're not sending somebody that's not super competitive in that weight class. Yeah, I think that's the case in, in all the weight classes, honestly. 100%. Uh, team USA has a really good team. I think even if the guys that, you know, no matter who won the matches at Final X, Team USA was still probably going to win a world title no matter who we sent, you know. Yeah, our our second team could probably win a world title. Yeah, uh, you know, I think that's there's, actually that would be fun to go through. Well, I bet there's you're, there's I bet six you're completely right. Yeah, there's six uh, people that have never made a world team before that made it this this past weekend. Wow. Wait, which six? So Zane, you got Zane Richards, Nick, Vito, Vito. Oh wow. Nick Lee. Yeah. Um. Uh. Chance Zahid. Chance Marsteller, Zahid, and Gable. Gable obviously won the Olympic Gable's gold. Gable's never made a world <laughs> he's team. Never, he's never made the world team. Well, technic- technically, he kind of did make the world team after he won the Olympics, but he chose not but to. But he chose not to go. Uh, he chose not to go in 2021. So He's never um, competed at the world championships. Yeah, he's That's never crazy. competed at the world championships. So. Wow. So only four uh, you know, returning guys. We got, you, got, uh, you got Zane, Dake, mm-hmm. David, and Kyle Snyder. So did, did Gable wrestle at the trials? I don't think he did in 2019. I don't think so for uh, Kazakhstan. Yeah, yeah. Um, for Kazakhstan. Oh, for the for the championships. Yeah, Kazakhstan. the world championships there. Yeah. Um, that's wild that he's never made a world team. Yeah. Yeah. So we got six new guys, but they're all. I mean, they're all vets. Like Vito is wrestled at Pan Ams. Um, all these guys have been on the circuit. Zahid obviously is really really good. Yeah, Zahid's uh, been around a long time. Nick Lee's a killer. Um, yeah. Zane, like we said, is killer. Um, other Zane killer, uh, but <laughs> <laughs> been on the team. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. Uh, so, okay. So, fifty-seven kilos going up to sixty-one. Yeah, this is probably the most entertaining uh, matches of the weekend. Big Vito moves. versus Nation. Yeah. Um. You know, a lot of a lot of high-scoring matches. Uh. You know, they're two of probably the fastest wrestlers in the country. Um, yeah. You know, super explosive and um, their de- their defense is is pretty good, but they're both so fast that they're able to have such a high powered offense on each other. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, both the matches came down to, you know, the last minute, um, you know, who's going to score last and, um, Vito was able to edge in both matches. Um, yeah. You know, one, one thing that those two do really, really well, and it piggybacks off their speed is, um, is they score in like bunches yeah. They like when they score, they're scoring. And most of the time they're getting like four or six or like, um, racking up the scores because they're going right into a transition or they're hitting a big move. Yeah, Vito is a is a really good wrestler that hits, uh, you know, hits good solid technique, but he also has the ability to hit uh, really high level moves, like big high flyer moves. So he almost, yeah. I mean, I think he probably had five on Nation. I don't know if you guys saw that scoring sequence. He basically it looked like the USA wrestling symbol, but he, uh, you know, basically back arched him. And uh, yeah, I mean, Vito's really really good at uh, getting takedown to turn. Uh, anytime that he was kind of in rear standing position, he was looking for his gut wrench, mm-hmm. uh, or you know if he was taking him down at the legs, he was looking for his leg lace. So, um, both super high level wrestlers. Um, yeah, Vito's first world team. It's gonna be fun to watch him wrestle. Yeah, and shout out to Nation because he looked great. Yeah, and like um, this this last circuit with, between the Open and this one and the World Team Trials, like been looking incredible. Yeah, so Nation. Kudos to him. Yeah, Nation's been na- na- Nation, Nation, <laughs> Nation. I was at, we were in uh, Usada uh, after. <laughs> this is really funny. We were in Usada after the matches, and Nation comes in. I'm sitting there with Zane, and uh, the Usada lady goes, "Are you Nashan?" And he goes, "Nashan." It's pronounced Nashan. 
<laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. You know, he's like, he's like the funniest guy. Like, he, win or lose, you know, he's he's making jokes and he's like <laughs> signing autographs and, uh, you know, just a really good sport. Uh, oh, but he's the that best. was funny when he came in. He, no, 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 Sean. Oh, he's like, that lady's just sitting there trying to keep up. <laughs> yeah. And she was like, I don't really know if you're telling the truth or not. <laughs> you, but did she try to pronounce it? No, no, or is no. she like you right yeah, this way? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, Nashon has, uh, you know, I feel like in his career he's had a lot of kind of like uh, roller coaster. Like some years he'll do really good, and then another year, like, you know, might lose a couple matches that he shouldn't have lost. But, mm-hmm. uh, you know, this year is, you know, it's probably the best I've ever seen him look. So, yeah. you know, being at uh, Lehigh Valley, uh, you know, RTC is, seems to be really helping him. Uh, get better yeah and um i think for a while there he was just between training centers so it was kind of like he didn't have great partners or not you know great partners but just like the same access to training Mm -hmm. you know so he is he's looking great right now at lehigh valley yeah so next match we got 65 65. kilos this was this was pretty nuts wild Uh, wild this is another scenario where i think a lot of people were writing nick lee off 100 because uh, and I don't really know why. I think it's probably because of the success that Vito's had overseas in wrestling against like some of the like Yanni. world medalists. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Vito Yanni, same thing. <laughs> same thing. They're the same person. <laughs> Have you ever seen them both in the same room at the same time? No, I they, don't know. They skip. So <laughs> yeah, they can wrestle multiple weight classes. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. Uh, no, I mean Yanni has had a lot of success overseas. You know, beating you know world medalists and uh, Nick Lee kind of just started his overseas circuit. Uh, and you know he wrestled in Croatia this past uh, January or February, and um, I think he lost one match. Um, mm-hmm. But other than that, he looked great. Uh, but if you recall, Nick Lee and Yanni wrestled back at the Olympic trials, mm-hmm. and I think because I think a lot of people, you know, Nick Lee uh, had a, a lot of good wins in that tournament. But I think a lot of people thought that um, you know the match with Nick Lee and Yanni didn't really matter. Because Yanni had, Yanni had lost, and it was the backside, and they're like, oh, yeah. he's mentally, uh, you know, he, he doesn't want to continue. But, um, you know, as a competitor, there there are some times where, like, athletes don't care on the backside, but, like, most, most good competitors, like, want to win For every sure. single match. So, like, I know, like, even if I'm on the backside, I don't ever want to be on the backside, but if I'm on the backside, like, I'm still fighting, like, as hard as I can. And, um, yeah, the, the hype might not be there as much, but, I mean, you still want to win. So that, that win for Nick Lee over Yanni at the Olympic trials was still uh, an amazing win. And so, you know, I was definitely ready for a battle. Uh, Nick Lee is only getting better, you know. Last year at the World Team Trials, he didn't know it had to defend a gut wrench. But, <laughs> you know, he's been working part tear. He's been working part tear for the last year and, uh, you know, working on his wrestling IQ. I think, like, yeah. him and I are very similar, like, in our in our wrestling where, like, we only wrestled folk style for so long and then you get into uh, freestyle and then you have to like grow your wrestling IQ because yeah. it's like, it's a more strategic and technical sport. So, um, you know, Nick Lee's done that over the past year. So I was confident that he was going to win these matches, but obviously Yanni's so good that, uh, you know, the matches obviously came down to, you know, a challenge call at the end of the second match and, you know, two really close matches, uh, well fought by both opponents, I thought. Yeah, absolutely. And like to piggyback off what you're saying, like the uh, the transitions into freestyle, he's actually had a full training cycle, you know, from coming out of college last year and just wrestling full time uh, here in State College. So it's uh, it's exciting because he he just keeps progressing and getting better. And in every position in freestyle and folk style, you have different goals of what you're trying to achieve. You know, elevating him through when they're in on your leg is going to be two in freestyle rather than scooting the corner getting behind so yeah. it's cool to see him just like progress like you said his, his wrestling iq and just get better and he looks lights out he looked great yeah he's just gonna keep getting better i'm excited uh to watch him at the worlds and hopefully uh you know if he wrestles the guy that beat him in croatia to redeem that loss and look for look for, to see him contend That's for a sweet. world title yeah absolutely and i think yanni was uh united world wrestling put something out where they were like um i think yanni was ranked number one and their their rankings are so weird like they're all over the place because like all over the place you have like a guy that like uh didn't even place in the Croatia tournament in my weight class and he's ranked like fourth in the world and I think it's because uh I think it's because of 
like the tournaments that you go to like the more ta- tournaments you go to the more like world ranking points like right i saw like on their rankings i wasn't even ranked like top 15 or whatever you should but, get on that. but i had beat like the number three four and five guy or something like or they were all in my bracket <laughs> um but you know obviously they don't have the russians ranked right now because they haven't been competing but like uh i think there's probably a website that uh ranks it according to the result rather than just uh right. points built up at tournaments yeah because it, it goes back to their point system of like how they're going to seed things so like uh i think david was saying in one of his like interviews he's like i'm gonna be seated like eighth at yeah the world yeah i think like david's ranked eighth in the world over yeah it's due to uh, inactivity obviously you know he's the number one threat to win the world title this year so yeah yeah some people are saying he was he was pound for pound i think it was on flow's cast that they were saying that obviously returning world champ beat yasdani real bad and then um you know olympic champ as well so excited for him and um so next weight class we Zane and Berger. Zane and Berger. Wild. Yeah, the first match, uh, you know, Zane, Zane was kind of, you know, in control most of the match. Mm-hmm. And then he thought he had won by tech fall. And they ended up challenging it and so that he was up by nine. I think it was 11 to two. Berger got the first takedown, and then Zane wrestled really good, uh, you know, to get an 11 2 lead. And then, uh, and I always say, like, Berger's really good, like, Mm-hmm. He, I think he's one of the more underestimated wrestlers. Uh, he's really fast. He has really good attack. So, um, yeah, uh, it was funny because Zane almost got the tech fall, and then there's 15 seconds left. They come back to the center, and Tyler Berger, like, blasts a double right into Zane's face. Yeah. And I, I, I don't think it was, like, uh, intentionally to, like, try to, like, give Zane a concussion or anything. Mm-hmm. I think he was just, like, trying to score. And, like, him and Burroughs, they kind of wrestle the same. Like, they're, like – I'm going to keep my head up and I don't care if my face gets beat up. Yeah. I'm going to just try to blast through them. And it when just, you're married, you can get away with these types of things. Exactly. You know, I have to protect my face a little bit more. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You, you can worry about like, you, you don't have to worry about that. You got scars all over your face. It's, it's good. You yeah. Know? It's a, it's a luxury. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So yeah. So Zane, obviously there was a lot of like that. It got really heated, uh, during that. And, um, you know, the last 15 seconds was absolutely wild. And then yeah. the next match, Zane comes in. He has a he has a wrap over his – I don't think he had gotten – the doctor recommended that he didn't get stitches at that point yeah. because they're like, it'll probably just bust open again, so let's just wait until after your match. I actually talked to the doctor about it on the sideline, and he's like, dude, he's like, there's like nothing you can do. Yeah. He's like, those stitches would be – it would be worse for him to get stitches, yeah. like significantly. So he's like, we just got to clot it and wrap it. And then he goes out there, and he can't – it's like the there's a picture that Bashmania put out <laughs> yeah. on their thing, and it's like you have like a little. He's like looking like this, and they had to stop the second match a lot because Zane couldn't see. Yeah. I think Berger was like trying to like <laughs> pull it down. <laughs> pull it down. <laughs> I would be too. Let's be real. They were doing a lot of like face <laughs> face pushes, so uh. um, I don't know what was going on there. But no, it was obviously it was a uh, the second match. I thought Berger made a lot of really good adjustments mm-hmm. uh, with Zane, and you know Zane had to get a, a takedown I think to take the lead in the second period and I think he ended up winning by one point but you know Berger obviously you know looked really good at the World Cup again and looked really good at the U.S. Open uh yeah you know, electric win at the yeah, end of against the US Sammy Open. so against Sammy Sasso and then uh you know wrestling Zane uh Zane's like obviously one of the pound for pound best guys in the world as well yeah and uh you know to uh keep Zane to a a one point match obviously like Tyler doesn't Tyler doesn't care about one point match or five point like he wants to win right and like all competitors like they're like yeah I just want to win like I don't care if I lost by one or if I lost by this many points but right you know you could definitely see that he closed the gap and uh is getting better yeah absolutely and Zane tough as nails to yeah. have his head split open and just stay in good position the entire time um, yeah, that's another thing. It's even like when you can't see yeah Zane couldn't see that whole second match and <laughs> and, and uh you know to to keep fighting and obviously there's a lot of like external stuff that was going on like uh you know he couldn't see the he had to keep re, uh stop and rewrap you know it's kind of disrupting the flow of the match but to keep fighting through that uh just shows like really good really tough character and you know grit absolutely shout out zane yeah so yeah. the next weight class obviously 74 kilos uh you know i kind of t- already talked about my energy going into the match you know i had a I had a really good game plan. Uh, you know, I executed my game plan good. It obviously just wasn't a good enough game plan. 
Um, you know, Dake made a lot of adjustments from the last time that we competed. Um, and, you know, I'm just going to, it's going to just force me to keep getting better and keep learning and growing. And obviously, uh, you know, having somebody like Dake, like Dake had Burroughs that he couldn't get past for a while. And, you know, David Taylor had Burroughs, Dake and Burroughs yeah. that he couldn't beat uh, for a really, really long time. And, um, you know, having guys like that, and now you're seeing the success that Dake and David have had. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they didn't make their first world teams until 27, 28, and I'm only 27. So obviously I have a lot of uh, life ahead of me and a lot of opportunities to grow and keep getting better. So, you know, having guys like that, uh, you know, even in the Penn State room that are going to challenge me and uh, to – you know, because if, if I if I had somebody that I just went out there and uh, tech fall, which, you know, that's the plan every match. Like, it doesn't matter who I'm wrestling. I want to go out and get a tech fall. Right. Um, but having somebody that I've really had to, like, really dive into my technique and get better, um, that, that's made me such a better wrestler already. You've seen it, like, uh, you know, going overseas and beating the world uh, bronze medalist from the last two years from Iran. Uh, you know, making those, making those big jumps and uh, growth has been really important for me. So even though... I did lose, you know, uh, I'm, I'm viewing as it a positive because it's going to help me keep getting better and grow. And, um, you know, it's going to make me a better wrestler in the long run, even though, uh, you know, it's not in God's plan right now for me to be on the world team right now. Uh, maybe it is, uh, you know, uh, you know, I'm still going to prepare for the world championships. You never know, like with injuries and, you know, sicknesses, you know, people, Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to be prepared to, to go compete at the world championships as the alternate. So, um, I'll be ready for that. But, you know, breaking down the matches individually, they both ultimately came down to one scoring sequence. Uh, the first match, uh, I gave up. A re- he got in really deep on a double leg. So I was down 1 0 on a shot clock point. When the shot clocks happen, I, I don't like try to stress and worry about like trying to sprint to get a takedown, uh, especially when it's in the first period, mm-hmm. especially with a new rule where, uh, you know, even if. Uh, the person that's not on the clock scores, they can still get the shot clock point added on. So, um, you know, in the past you could be like, Oh, I'll give up a push out and then they won't get the shot clock point because they scored. But now you get both. Right. So, you know, when the shot clock happens, I'm, I'm just still, you know, being disciplined with my, uh, offense and defense and being selective on, you know, when I want to attack. So, um, gave up that point early and then he got in really deep on a double leg and I don't know how, but I, did like a wheelbarrow handstand out of out of bounds and, and then all, made it so your knees didn't touch. Yeah, my knees didn't touch, and the yeah. re- I think the referee on the mat called too, and I I was like, you can see me in the in the camera, like no, he didn't. Get, I didn't even come close to touching. Yeah, and so you know to have the ability to, uh, you know, only give up one there was really big for me, uh, especially because of how good Dake is defensively. You don't want to give him a big lead, right? Because uh, then it's it's really hard to come back. Um, obviously. Uh, so, you know, in the second period, uh, I needed to go get to his legs and I was able to do that. Um, I got in really deep on a single leg and, um, the problem was my head was inside. So having my head trapped inside, he was able to get to his, uh, chest lock and get his hips in really, really hard. And, you know, in the time I didn't know, uh, I kind of felt like my heels were coming off the mat. So I was really trying to fight back. Mm -hmm. Um, but I also felt like I could have just kind of sent it and scored. But in the in the moment, I didn't do that because, uh, because you know there was still a lot of time on the clock left, and I was only down two. So if I give up, if I give up a big score there, you know the match is uh, a lot more out of hand than you know it's still being two zero. So I uh, kind of inside tripped his leg and tried to get a stalemate, um, but my body ended up in a bad position. I kind of got squished, mm. and he ended up getting uh, two and two on a trap arm. So um, you know that was the first match you know, kind of decided by that scoring sequence. If I get, if I go in and I score that takedown, you know, I'm in the lead at that point. Right. And, uh, you know, in the second match, I wrestled as hard as I could and, um, you know, wrestled as high pace as I could. Uh, I think I stayed on the outside a little bit too much. I need to get in a little bit, uh, you know, and control the center of the mat and uh, do a better job of that. But, you know, gave up, gave up one takedown where I kind of got caught leaning forward a little bit. But, um, yeah. Just uh, unfortunate for me, obviously, to you know to lose the two matches, but still um, a lot to learn from both the matches, and you know being able to make adjustments moving forward is going to be really important. Yeah, and you have like a great perspective on it. 
you know, um, just mentally talking to you after the match. Um, you're like, yep, this is an opportunity to get better. And he's, I mean, he's the world champ four times over, right? So um, he's that last rung in the ladder. You can yeah. beat him. Obviously, you can beat anybody in the world. That's the kind of uh, yeah, that's kind of what I've like figured. Like, you know, seventy four kilos is always like it's a legendary weight class. Like, yeah, that's the best weight class, uh, you know, of any weight class uh, from the USA. Mm -hmm. Like, if you make the world team at seventy four kilos, you're almost like expected to win the gold. For sure. It's like if you don't win the gold, like that's almost like a letdown, mm -hmm. like in the in the eyes of people, uh, because you had you know Burroughs has held the, uh, you know has made the team like ten times at seventy four kilos. Then you've had, you know, Dake the last uh, few years, and you know next it'll be me. So uh, you know having having that expectation at seventy four. I mean, you know you win at seventy four, you're you're like the pound for pound the number one guy <laughs> in the yeah. world. Seriously, basically. So. Yeah, no, it's um, it's super, super tough weight, and you know the Olympics is next next year. You got time to get better. Yeah, you got time to improve, and that's where your mindset is. It's it's uh, obviously heart wrenching for me to watch as as your boy, but like the um, you know I want to see you win, but at the same time I, I love your perspective on it and your mentality of it, just getting better. Yeah, yeah, you just got to focus on what you can control. Obviously, you know it still stings even like a couple days after the event. Uh, you know, filming this. Uh, it's still like it sucks losing and you like but you want to do everything you can to make that not happen again yeah but you just got to control what you can control and keep moving forward and you know keep working to get better I liked what you said too after um, after we were, we were talking a bit and you were like I'm I'm proud of my effort I'm proud of the way I competed you know you were saying saying that stuff and it's like that's that's the right perspective to have yeah yeah I gave 100% um, just uh, you know need to you know, that's all you can really ask yourself. And that kind of like takes away the stress going into competing too. Obviously there's going to be nerves, but going, going into a competition, if you can just say, I'm just going to do my best and you do it, then that's all you can ask yourself. And, you know, and then if you lose, you got to go make adjustments and you got to, uh, you know, have a new game plan going into the next event. So do your best, forget the rest. Yeah. That's awesome. It's a good little rhyme there. <laughs> 79. 79. Yeah. Let's get past the, the 74 crap um, <laughs> 79 this was this was also probably the second most entertaining uh, series wild yeah so the first match uh, you know obviously Jordan Burroughs versus Chance Marsteller Marsteller has had an amazing story uh, if you guys haven't checked out Marsteller's story uh, look it up I'm sure it's on Google there's probably a somebody thousand. needs to do a documentary yeah there's gonna be a movie about him but um, you know I won't get into that but if you want to look up Chance Marsteller's story just there's probably thousands of articles on him um, and interviews that he's uh, given. So and and before we get into the match, Jordan Burroughs has been on the world team. Like obviously he missed the 2020 Olympics. He has been on the world team since I started wrestling. He's like, he's been on the world team since 2011. Yeah, and he made it's the world crazy. team in 2021, the same year as the Olympics because they did the yeah um, yeah. So I mean that's been like what 12, 13 years in a row. Yeah, uh, that he hasn't missed a missed a team other than like you said the Olympics. So. Um, you know, he's obviously he's getting old. Um, he's still really good. Still incredible. A lot of people say, yeah. Oh, you should retire. It's like, well, I mean, he can retire when he wants to retire. Yeah. You know, he's like, he's, a, he's at the, he's the second best at 79 kilos and, you know, in the country, you know, whenever maybe he wants world. to, yeah, maybe the world, you know, whenever he wants to retire, then he can retire. He, he can keep wrestling whenever he wants. Like people will sit at home on their computer, like just wants to talk, t want to talk crap. It's like annoying. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, it is. But, uh, you know, they're, they're the whole quote, quote about the man in the arena. You can put that on the podcast here. Put the screenshot the up. Man in the arena. Um, but you know that that's a really good message there. But you know, going into the match, you know, Chance obviously, you know, a lot of people will probably view him as the underdog. Um, you know, last year he did take Burroughs at three matches. He won, I think, the second match at Final X in Madison Square Garden, and uh, you know, all the matches were really close. This the first match was nuts because Chance had the match won. With like 15 seconds left, there's a, a singlet pool, and you can see it on the video. There is a singlet pool, but it, it made no difference whatsoever in in the match. So I will say this, and this is no no shade to anybody. Penn RTC has some of the best challenges I have ever seen. <laughs> you hear you hear that about Penn State? <laughs> yeah, no, a better. The only one's what, better. Who, is had, Kale who gets and, better challenges, Kale or Brandon Kale. Slay? 
Oh, it's close though. <laughs> <laughs> it's close. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, Mark obviously it was in Burroughs quarter too, Mark Hall. Uh so they have kind of the Penn State power and the Penn power. And and the referees are definitely swayed by everything. Well, I mean, Jordan Burroughs too is uh you know, he's done a lot for USA wrestling, so obviously when he's wrestling, you kinda gotta like you gotta really beat him. Like you yeah. can't give the re- the refs any reason to give him the win. No, and uh, you know, and then even the encouragement from the corners, like stuff that sl- like points that Slay is making, and then points that Reese is making in the other corner, like that all plays into what the ref makes the decision. Yeah, on. yeah. There needs to be like a an outside booth review location. <laughs> yeah, that, that just goes to New York City, and they they're doing it. They're not watching the coaches at all. They're only watching the the scoring sequence and they make a decision but but what happens if the flow stream goes down (laughs) we can't be we can't be talking about flow flow wrestling obviously they've done a lot of great things for for the for the sport so uh i definitely like flow wrestling but uh, yeah but uh yeah i mean the first match uh they throw that jordan doesn't score he throws he's like give me the break (laughs) i think he just goes like this he's sitting on his knees like this and uh i'm like I was like, there's no way. Like, what are they even challenging? And then they replay it, and at 15 seconds, uh, you know, he pulls a singlet. And I don't know what the rule is. Is it 10 seconds after the the supposed uh, point was supposed to be given that you can't challenge it? Um, but regardless, they end up giving it to Jordan. And I, I was thinking the whole time, are they going to, like, is this going to go to arbitration? Like, hmm. is this going to be a Yanni versus Zane 2.0? And I'm like, yeah, we just got to kind of see how these next couple matches go. So yeah. I know Chance, I saw him in the back, and, you know, he had a pretty good attitude. You know, he wasn't down on himself. He's like, all right, like he, t- he told me after I lost, he's like, all right, let's go get this, you know, like. And uh, so, like, he had he had a good mentality going into it, and he was able to, you know, win the next two matches. Uh, the, the second match, <clears throat> really close. Third match, absolutely insane. You know, this is probably one of the most yeah. controversial. And I don't, on, in my opinion, like, I don't really think it's controversial, uh, you know, the, the four point throw at the end of the match, um, I think Burroughs made a mistake. You know, he was he was winning by he was winning by one or two. I think he was winning by two and he was going for a push out and he kinda just got his hips too high and his and uh you know, didn't didn't keep his hips low to the mat, so uh he was pushing, pushing, pushing. Chance throws the front headlock, gets a four point move. I think they give it to Burroughs originally, hmm. gets challenged, overturned and chance wins. I think th- no, I think they gave it to Chance originally. Did they? Yeah, and then uh, they threw the brick and then they reviewed it and then um, they were like almost saying that it was going to go back to Burroughs and then they gave it a chance. Yeah, yeah. So I'd it was like kind of like a back and forth re- thing. Either way, it was like yeah, it was back and forth and then um, you know Burroughs was not having it. No, you might be right. It might have been four for Burroughs first. John, you know, uh, dude, I'm I don't pretty remember. much I'm pretty much always right. So <laughs> I didn't I just didn't want to argue about it. I knew I was right. <laughs> I didn't want to argue back and forth. <laughs> all right okay hey. fair enough fair enough Fair enough. all right so so uh yeah i mean maybe i'm not right but most, <laughs> m- most of the time i'm right but uh okay, you know after right. after that happened uh you know it was probably like 15 minutes and burroughs was still like trying to tell the refs that it was his points yeah and it's like you gotta just you gotta keep rustling and um you know regardless of you know the the person that was competing like you just gotta like, like okay i mean the ref made the decision Mm-hmm. You kind of have to just respect it almost. I mean, or else like you're threatening like disqualification or like maybe like a penalty point for not going back to the center of the mat. So, yeah. um, you know, Chance ends up winning that match and, um, you know, Burroughs looked like he was going to retire at the end of the match. He kind of sat in the middle and a while. Chance wanted to do his backflip and <laughs> Burroughs is sitting in the middle of the mat That'll contemplating retirement maybe. And, uh, Chance has to go to the third place, or not, not the third place match, but the the side mat, I think, where the uh, women or Greco were wrestling and do his backflip over there mm-hmm. because Burroughs was sitting in the middle of the mat on on the center mat. So, um, you know, that Chance still got his moment, but, you that know, it would have been nice to be able to see him do it in where he wanted to do it. <laughs> yeah, and you could tell JB kind of was thinking about retiring because probably for him, the, you know, the standard is being on the world team or retirement. Yeah. Um. So we'll see what he does, but I mean, I think he'll be back back next year for sure. Uh, for you know, Olympics. I think like what he said is he wants to, you know, try to make the twenty twenty four Olympic team. So he'll be he'll be down at seventy four kilos most likely. You think he'll uh, be down or he'll go up? I think he'll go down. Yeah, yeah. it's a lot of weight. 
it is going to be a big weight cut for him. But I mean, yeah. he 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 he's cut to seventy four a lot, yeah, and has had a lot of hard weight cuts to seventy four. So we'll see. I mean, he has a lot of time to prepare for that. So yeah, um, you know, obviously, you know, a lot of respect for Burroughs and Chance. You know, great series. Yeah, um, fun to watch. Good for the fans. Lots of respect to both of those guys. Um, it was a it was a fun to watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So next we got 86 kilo, and this is the other uh, NLWC versus NLWC action, uh, yeah. other than 74. Uh, you know, David Taylor and Aaron Brooks, and um, this was a, also a really uh, defensive matchup. So you know, David kind of talked about it in the press conference. Um, you know, that's just kind of the way RTCs are. R- RTCs are really good for college programs now. So you know, people are able to make a living you know, wrestling at an RTC. So they're, they're growing, growing. And Penn state obviously is one of the best RTCs in the country. So, and the best college wrestling program. And there's a hundred percent of correlation between that. Uh, you know, RTCs help grow college uh, programs for sure. And especially when you have the support of, you know, Penn state, you know, donors and stuff that, that are willing to like support RTCs and everything like that. So, you know, having, you know, David, I think he graduated in 2014. He's still around nine years later. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you're going to end up competing against your teammates. And, uh, you know, Aaron Brooks, like one of the best guys in the world as well at 86 kilos. So there were two really competitive matches. David edged him uh, in a couple of positions, but, you know, I thought Aaron had a, a lot of really good, uh, you know, he, he scored a takedown or two, you know, uh, scored a lot, uh, he scored a few points on David, mm-hmm. you know, and to score on uh, David Taylor is, you know, a challenge, you know, not even y- y- Yazdani, I don't even know if I scored on him last year at the world. So it's very you know, hard. You know, I'd say like at that weight class, it's almost like, yeah, you're number one and two in the world. Mm-hmm. Whoever makes the world team is probably gonna, you know, win the Olympics. You obviously have Yazdani that's uh, you know, gonna be in the mix there, but uh you know, Yeah, Brooks, but I like I like Brooks's odds against Yazdani. Yeah, I mean they, they have a similar style and I think that Brooks is probably in better shape. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, I mean Brooks David a couple times got in really deep on Brooks' legs and Brooks like stepped over sprawl back like mm-hmm. uh fought really hard out of a couple positions with some really hard sprawls so i mean that just shows the strength of aaron brooks and obviously for david to get uh past him um shows that you know even at well, how old's david now 40 years old <laughs> <laughs> however old david is you know 32 i think 32 yeah you know he's, he's still got it so yeah absolutely and he um they both looked great um both looked like they can take on anybody in the world like you said um David is, I think he's ranked eighth, so he's got a lot yeah, of work to do. He's no. an underdog. <laughs> he's the underdog. No, I mean he's he's definitely the number one guy at eighty six kilos. Yeah, yeah. So they both looked great, and um, and ninety two, ninety two is is kind of crazy because you have two guys that are coming mostly from different weight classes, and Zahid is was eighty six at the U.S. Open, and then had a super strong showing, obviously at Final X, and. I mean, he might be better at that weight class. He might stay there other than the Olympics, you know, but he might stay there for um, outside the Olympic cycle. Yeah, so, I mean, Zahid's another guy that's, like, really high level. Uh, you know, Aaron Brooks beat him at the U.S. Open uh, to make Final X, and then Zahid went up and, t- you know, beat Colin Moore, who's another really good wrestler at 92, you know. Uh, and Colin's had a lot of success uh, internationally as well. I like, get these uh, ranking series tournaments, so... Um, I wasn't really sure what was going to happen between Mike Mock and Zahid just because Mike Mock is absolutely huge. Yeah. He's like one of the biggest dudes, uh, you know, in the, in the in that weight class, uh, probably in the world. And, you know, Zahid is just really slick. So he was able to kind of – and I think his speed was able to give him the edge a little bit. Uh, yeah, a little bit over uh, Mike Mock in that. And, uh, you know, just kind of kind of used his speed against him and, you know, won two straight matches. Yeah, very impressive. Um, very, but I'm for both guys. But like, uh, Zahid's looking good at that weight class, so he's probably gonna do some damage at Worlds. Yeah, for sure. The next, the next weight class is questions. There's some questions to be <laughs> to be had at this next weight class. Obviously, Kyle Snyder. A lot of build up between Kyle Snyder and Jaden Cox. Uh, you know, at the press conference, Jaden said that he wanted to demolish Kyle, mm-hmm. and then uh, you know later that night rolled his ankle at uh at the training uh facility and rolled his ankle uh, bad yeah he rolled his ankle bad um kept kept drilling uh but 
ultimately, I guess, wasn't able to uh, compete on Saturday. I don't really know what happened uh, because he was drilling even after he rolled his ankle and then he showed up in a wheelchair at the event on uh, at the event on Saturday. So uh, unfortunate to not be able to see that series. I, I like watching Kyle Russell a lot, mm-hmm. and I like seeing him wrestle against challenging opponents. Like Kyle's is freaking game for whatever. You know, whenever he uh, at the World Cup, he goes, "I'll wrestle heavyweight and 97 kilo. Like, put me against everybody. I want to. I want to take down line up 125 up to heavyweight. Like, he's like, he's just like crazy. And <laughs> Zadik's uh, probably sitting there, like, okay, okay, yeah. champ, okay, champ. Yeah. <laughs> so I wanted to see that series. Uh, we saw it obviously at the super match. Kyle won two uh, two matches to zero. Uh, the rudest super match uh, before nationals last year. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I was interested in it for sure. Like, they're. Um... Their clash of styles, people were saying, oh, well, Jaden, you know, um, maybe he wasn't taking the super match serious. Maybe this is like, you know, he's taking it more seriously. And it sucks that we didn't get to see it because they do have an interesting clash of styles, you know, in the way that they wrestle. And uh, it was going to be fireworks for sure. And you're like, you're Jaden's biggest fan, too. What are you talking about? Being from Missouri? Well, yeah, I grew up watching Jaden Cox win. He was your hero. Titles. He wasn't my hero. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was very good. Like honestly, like everyone's like, "Oh wow, that dude's gonna go off and have massive success." Yeah, we knew that was gonna happen. Um, I thought and, he was gonna go play that in an NFL or something. Yeah, something like that. But uh, no, come on now. Uh, no, he did. He said he was gonna go play in the NFL at some point. Oh, for real? Yeah, like he was done wrestling, and then he was going to go like play in the NFL, and then he decided not to. How long ago was this? This is like right after his college career, I think. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's we'll have crazy. to look it up. Fact check me. Yeah, I think he played like middle linebacker or something in high school. I'm trying to remember. I don't know. But uh, Columbia Hickman. Yeah, for sure. He was tough. So then the last weight class, we got heavyweight Gable Stevenson versus Mason Paris. Mm. Um Mason Paris made a lot of good adjustments from the last few times that he's wrestled Gable. Those were two close matches, yeah. and uh, you know Mason was in them. Uh, you know Gable obviously had the had the upper hand and the advantage um, in both the matches, but um, you know Mason I thought made a lot of improvements and just continues to get better. It speaks to what you said earlier about like the second team guys to go and win worlds, like all of them. And yeah, it's like, yeah, Mason is definitely on that level. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, but Gable looking great when he wants to attack and he starts his offensive cycle. I don't know if anybody can stop him there. Yeah, I mean he's the best in the world. I'm excited to watch him versus the Iranian. Uh, Czar. Czar, yeah, yeah. That's gonna be fun. That's gonna be really fun. Well, I think Czar did Czar lose his bronze medal at the Olympics I, match? I don't I don't I don't know if he was competing at that point. Oh really? I'm not like super uh, knowledgeable on heavyweight. <laughs> so it's like Gable and other people. All right, so we got Gable. <laughs> Gable put on a show for the fans. Did his backflip. Uh, did the Did he do the Hulk Hogan? Yeah, probably. Uh, probably. Yeah. So, um, you know, does the puts the hands out. Mm-hmm. Goes, you want some? Mm-hmm. You want some of this? And everyone's so, like, I do. I do want some. Yeah. Like, yeah. Sure. Please. <laughs> <laughs> I do, guess so. Do the thing, please. Do the thing. But. Yeah, no, it was obviously, uh, you know, just to recap, it was, it was a good event, um, fun to compete at, uh, good crowd, and, you know, I'm excited to compete again. And, you know, you know, as a fan, uh, I'm sure, like, fans appreciated the experience. Um, I didn't hear a lot of negative feedback uh, from the arena. The only, the only negative things I heard were about, like, not having enough food or, around or something, <laughs> like, the, that the area wasn't ready for it, but... Um, yeah, there was no hospitality room. Yeah. So we got free, like, concession food, but it's fine. It's yeah. whatever. I've had worse experiences. It was it was nice. Um, yeah, the arena was good. Newark, New Jersey. If you haven't watched the matches yet, I encourage you to go to flowwrestling.org. Uh, if you don't have an account, uh, create an account, and then uh, watch, rewatch the matches and let us know what you think in the comments. Lots of exciting matches for sure. Yeah. And if you like this content, be sure to like and subscribe. And, uh, you know, Keep, keep, uh, what do you say? Stay hard. We'll, we'll keep, what, you, we'll see you in the next video. Yeah, uh, yeah we'll see you in the next video. Stay hard. We don't say stay hard. I don't think so. Uh, no. keep striving for greatness. There we go. So, that's fun. Sweet. That was yeah. fun.